In this exercise, we have four areas shown. We have array, shift, trans, and sort. Our first task is to take the information stored in the area labeled array, load it into a 10 by 10 array, and then transfer that information to the area labeled shift. Next, we were asked to take the information stored in the area labeled array, transpose it, and place it in the area labeled trans. Now, transposing data is where we take data that's listed in rows and then listed in columns and vice versa. Finally, we were asked to sort the data from the area labeled array and place it in the area labeled sort. So we're going to look at how we can do that. What we're looking at now is the code that will accomplish the goals of this exercise. At the top of the module, I have my compiler instructions. Option base 1 makes it so that an array without a specified lower boundary will have a default lower boundary of 1. Next, we see option explicit, which requires that all of our variables be declared. Then we move into the procedure. First, I declare my arrays. Notice that the first three arrays listed are going to be static with predefined dimensions. The fourth array is declared dynamically, meaning that I'll have to size it with the redim statement later. The fifth declaration is actually a variable of a variant data type, which I'll use to copy our original array. As we move down the code, we see variables declared and defined for numeric data types. In this piece of code, we use nested for next loop functions to pull the data and load it into the original array. Once we have the original array loaded, we want to copy it to another array, and that's what we're doing here. And if you noticed earlier, we had shift array declared as a variant data type. And what we're doing here is basically treating these two like variables, and we're just setting one equal to another. So whenever we do this, this shift array, which before was a variant data type, now becomes an array with equal dimensions and equal size to the original array. It also has all the same data in it. Now what we're looking to do is we want to take our shift array that we've just loaded and we want to print the data that's in it out over here on our spreadsheet. So if you notice, we're actually pulling information from the shift array, which was copied over from the original array, and we're going to print that data out. So let's see how that prints out for us. And if you look over here, it should give us an exact copy of what we're looking at up here in the original array. And I'm going to go ahead and speed through this. So if we look at these two areas, if we were to compare them, they should be identical. And at a glance, it looks like that's the case. So we're going to say that this was a successful transfer. Next, what we want to look at is transposing the array. Now, this is going to require some data manipulation as we transfer the array information from the original array to the transpose array. And that's going to happen right here. Because we're working with a 10 by 10, we have uh, basically a square array. So the way we're going to transpose this is where normally we go row by column. Whenever we transfer the information, we're actually going to go column by row. So this is actually right here. This portion is what's going to transpose the information. Now, this is unique because we're dealing with basically a square. With arrays of differing dimensions, you're going to have to be a little more creative. But this is just one way that we can transpose the information. So I'm going to go ahead and step through this. And what I want you to notice is that as we print it out, notice up here, it's going 18, 8, 85, 0. So here we're printing the column, which is equivalent to the row. So this column, as it prints out, is going to be equivalent to this row. And I'm going to go ahead and run through this. So if we were to look at each row for our original array, and we were to compare it to the columns of the transpose array, we should see that the column and the information were transposed. So what was once rows over here is now columns over there. Our final objective is to sort the data from the original array. We can call on our dynamic array to help us with this. First, we need to count the number of elements in the original array. That's going to tell us the size that our sort array needs to be. Now, what I want you to notice is that the sort array is going to be single dimensional. It's going to hold just as many elements as the two-dimensional array, but it's going to be easier to work with. Now, for this, I use the for each loop to step through the original array. And as I step through each element, I raise the count or the size by one. This is going to give me the total number of elements in the original array. Now, we do know that the original array is a 10 by 10 array. So we know that's going to have 100 elements. But for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to go ahead and use a calculated value. So as I step through this, you'll notice that the size is starting at 0 and it slowly increases. Now, since we have 100 elements, I'm going to pause the video and skip to where we've completed this loop. 
Here I'm at the redim statement where I'm going to redimension the sort array. Notice that I use our calculated value for the size. Also notice that I don't define a lower boundary. That's because I have an option base of 1. And that means that my default lower boundary is going to be 1. So my size is going to be 100, my lower boundary is going to be 1, and my upper boundary is going to be 100. So I have a single dimensional array with a lower boundary of 1 and an upper boundary of 100. The next thing I need to do is I need to load my sort array with the information from my original array. Again, I'm going to use a for each loop and I'm going to step through each element of the original array and place it in the sort array. Keep in mind that even though the original array is two dimensional and the sort array is one dimensional, both of them have the same number of elements. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and step through this loop. So what I end up with is I've created the sort array, it's a single dimensional array, and I've gone ahead and loaded it with the information I want to sort. Now that I have my information listed in a big long list in a single dimensional array, the trick now is I have to sort it. Think of the single dimensional array as a really long list. Starting from the beginning, we pick an element and the following element. So here we are, we've picked one element and we've picked the following element. Next, we ask the question, is the second element larger than the first? If so, then just leave them be. If not, then we swap their locations. So in this case, our first item is larger than our, our second item, and we go ahead and we swap their locations. And we do this for each item in the elements. So we're going to go through and we're going to go down this list a hundred times, and we're going to do this comparison. Once we've done it that many times, all of the elements should be sorted in ascending to descending order. I'm going to go ahead and just step through the code. Once we run through those loops, we basically have a single dimensional array, which is a long list, and all of the information has been sorted in it. So it's stacked from lowest to highest. Now what we want to do is we want to take that single dimensional array and we want to place it back into a two dimensional array. And that's what we're looking at here. And the way I load this is I'm going to load our two dimensional array basically from left to right in ascending order. So if you notice, I go down my columns first, then I go to the next row. And as I do this, I'm adding the next item in our one dimensional array. So as we step through, here I have one, one, and our first item here. Then I go to the next one. So here I'm in column three. I'm going to go ahead and step through this to the point where we're going to print out. So again, just to emphasize what we're doing is I am taking a two-dimensional array and I'm going to load it from left to right. I'm going to go through each column per row and I'm going to load it with a single-dimensional array starting from the beginning to the end. Now we're going to see how this information is going to print out over here on our spreadsheet. As you can see, from left to right, all of our information has been sorted. So hopefully this video has given you some insight in how to create arrays, work with arrays, and work with the elements of arrays. If you found this video useful, please click like and share with others. Thank you.